All right, so the uh, version 1.1 beta is now moved into the main Steam branch. That means that if you've opted into the beta in the past, you no longer need to. It is now part of the main uh, game. So real quick, we're going to go over some quick patch notes and we're going to talk about them in the game and how what their kind of long term ramifications are. Um, I do want to bring up real quick this though because a lot of people are asking hey how do i opt into the beta how do i do it well right now you can see that i'm currently well i'm running the game too so this is probably not going to be a little bit of a, an issue but uh, we're going to right click properties on the library of your steam on mountain blade 2. then we're going to go over here don't judge my games i have installed dang, damn it uh, we're going to go over here to betas and we're going to select from this drop down menu the beta that you want to be opted into now if you are currently playing the game um, on the beta patch, you can just go to opt out of all betas. I'm currently in the next step of the beta, but that's already rolled into this main patch. So it's a little bit superfluous. Um, I could just go into none opt out of all betas and I'd be on the current patch for everyone. They said they're going to update the beta branch with a new set of uh, changes in the near future. But let's go real quick through some of these patch notes because they're they're actually a pretty nuanced patch notes in in some regards let's look at them really fast so they have a nice amount of uh of uh, uh crash fixes that were ha that happened um of course both single player and multiplayer um some of these might pertain to you i know one of these is on for uh hideouts uh, let me see if i can find it uh tech and caravans without a leader is one i know that that happened to me personally um fix a crash that occurred when the player successfully defected a lord through barter um and Fixed crash happens when the player character was walking on the campaign map after creating their own kingdom and uh, caused by villager parties that don't have healthy troops. Because, you know, healthy troops is the number one leading uh, plaque creation in the world. But save and load, uh, this is a big one for a lot of people that were having issues coming into the beta branch. So game now loads skills correctly from save games created with versions prior to 1.1 so you no longer will get monstrous amounts of skill uh, gains and levels when you jump onto the main branch so if you did not pay the play the beta this will not affect you your game is going to play totally fine and normal uh, also fix to save system backwards compatibility <laughs> I swear I know how to speak. Save fixed a save system backwards compatibility problem with saving primitive data types. So if you were having an issue wherein you couldn't load your game up starting in 1.1 or 1.1 betas, um, this should hopefully now have been fixed. Now we'll go into this new uh, campaign map layer uh, in a little bit. We'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, the nice thing here too is about sieges. If a player's fortification is besieged, they're warned by a text that appears in the top center of their screen i can't illustrate how awesome this is previously you had to just constantly check your your fiefs to see if they were besieged now you'll get a notification letting you know and it's the same thing too if your if your clan's parties are attacked further another big issue that people were having is that their uh, clans when they would go to break apart into multiple parties their uh, respective companions or their generals or their nobles whatever you want to call them were not creating good armies well this has been fixed the recruiting frequency of lords who are in good financial situation was increased. They will now try to fill their party limits more frequently. Also, uh, you might, you may or may not have been a symptom or a, a subject to this bug, <clears throat> but fixed a bug that caused the consumption of more than one horse when upgraded a troop <clears throat> to a mounted soldier while having several types of horses in our inventory. So, or your inventory. This hopefully means that you no longer have to deal with a lot of the issues with upgrading your mounted soldiers, like, say, for example, Volandian Squires. Um, up to the next progression, I believe they require a war horse. They should hopefully not bug out in this anymore. Um, a lot of things were changed with executions, uh, causing negative relations with honorable lords or negative relations with friends of the executed. That's kind of nice. Mercenary factions no longer join the kingdoms they're at war with, which is cool. Um, there was another one with mercenaries I wanted to look at. Oh, and in some cases, after a kingdom had been eliminated, the lords continued to spawn in a map location that is not reachable near Rehill's castle. They now spawn at a random settlement gate of their culture. So uh, should be a little bit easier uh, to get, I guess, vanquished settle or, uh, kingdoms back on the map. But players' mercenary payment per influence was stable after they entered a kingdom. So basically, if I entered in at like 100 dinar, 
uh, influence, then that was my lock-in. You know, hey, well, this is it. Now it's like a like a crappy landlord, and he's going to constantly fluctuate with your rent here. So now it is refreshed every 30 days. At least that's what I get from this and from a little bit of my little play testing on this. Um, now the big ones here are... Caravans are now seen as more valuable targets by bandits and minor factions, which means that they will be attacked more. This will increase the number of, number of battles that involve caravans. Previously, caravans were nearly a totally safe investment. Now bandits and minor faction lords sometimes attack caravans even if they are a bit stronger. And the second kind of gut shot here is that the pottery shop was very profitable. By creating two pieces of pottery, 80 dinars each, from one clay, 20 dinars, and doing this four times a day. Now, one clay produces one pottery, and pottery demand is halved to make its price more stable. And that is, honestly, that <clears throat> it seems like a huge nerf, but I'm not going to lie to you. That's probably more in line to what we should be having in the game. Uh, the workshops don't produce on a one to two ratio across the entire board. Uh, it's, it kind of made very little sense that the pottery was just through the roof. So let's jump into the actual game here and take a look at some of these modifications and how they kind of play out. Um, there's not a whole ton to go into, but the nice thing too about this, uh, this uh, the main branch is that it's going to sweep in all of the previous beta hotfixes. Uh, these were already included in the patch notes above, so nothing overly huge. If you didn't miss this, you didn't get this already. Uh, we got the plated helmet and northern lamellar uh, shoulders added into the game. Some kind of overhauls with the hero creations uh, phase, and you will also notice that. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's on this one. Fixed. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, there it is. Reverted the weight and build changes of NPCs and troops so that overweight characters are much less common. Kept the changes for special high tier units such as Falksmen. So, no longer do you have a uh, big uh, beefy Ram boys attacking. Also, a lot of the uh, the performance changes and overhauls uh, were also added in with this main branch update. So again, if you did not update to the beta branch when it came out, you're fine. This is now gonna get you up to 1.1 and the hot fix for 1.1. Let's jump into the game now. So here we are in the game. There's not a whole ton to show off at this stage. Um, I just wanna show you a couple little things. So previously, you know, you kinda had this layer and this layer. As far as being able to see um, individual armies moving across the field. What is this? Oh, it's my own caravan. <laughs> I was like, I don't have a party. Um, you can see individual parties moving across the field, villages, towns, castles, everything. Well, now they said they added another layer in here, so I can see this at a further distance back. Uh, namely, of course, the cities and the castles and the towns. It used to be that it would switch to this layer too quickly. So you get the up close layer where I can see everything. This layer where I can just see the towns, the castles, and my cities. And then this layer is when I'm seeing all the cities. So it does kind of make for a little bit of better of a bird's eye view to kind of determine where you're going. Um, I'll be honest, I kind of wish that the parties were more visible too at this range. Or maybe even if your scouting skill could see the parties at this range or something like that. Maybe that's a little too granular. But um, it is nice to see that I feel like this is a little bit more drawn out too. This layer has been moved back as it were. So I can see them at this range. Uh, versus having to be kind of like this to be able to see all the parties. So a lot more visibility in the campaign map as far as uh, determining where you're going to be heading, which is kind of nice. Now, I believe for my clan and my other, I only have, yeah, I've only got these two workshops. I, I just created a pottery pottery barn over here at Ox Hall. Um, but if you were to say make one of these in a, uh, the big famous one right now is of course the, the pottery barn. I call it pottery barn because I'm an idiot. But the big one over here at uh, Danustica, that's a big one for people to do pottery or actually even Poros because Poros has a high demand of pottery with uh, Lyceran or Lycaron having a high creation of um, clay. So it, this is just kind of like a little aside. But if you want to make a, a really productive workshop, take a look at your city, look at what's in demand in the city and look at what has neighboring resources in the other cities because this way it will create trade from other caravans in there and that's going to kind of another thing we're going to talk about is caravans uh caravans here for the most part are very low impact as far as you invest 15k and they're going to constantly return money for you in fact my guy right now a uh, caravan of jinda the spice vendor is giving me a thousand gold she's probably going to give me more if she reaches galen right now um we'll see what happens when she gets over there um but 
it, for the most part, it was kind of hard to catch caravans. Uh, NPCs wouldn't really touch caravans. Bandits wouldn't really touch caravans. So it was a low impact kind of guaranteed money source for the game. Now, this might look as a, a personal debuff to you or, or a nerf to you as the player, but it, anything that uh, Tail Worlds does, I've noticed, is on a like global economic scale, which sounds weird for the game that I'm playing, but they are not nerfing you, the person, from making money. They are trying to nerf the entire world from making money easily off of their caravans and from being able to have the mechanic of bandits influencing your city's growth, your individual villains' villages, and the overall just kind of socioeconomic uh, climate of your uh, culture. So, <clears throat> I, I have not test this, the, tested this to see if it's been fixed yet, but you do get, oh, where is it? There is a one that makes you have elite caravan guards, and I'm pretty sure that that is broken. Oh no, where is it? Uh, one of these will increase your caravan guards so that they're like way better. Doing barter, caravan work game influence, party size. Well, I promise there is a perk that grants you elite uh, caravan guards. And I think that perk, when A, it's active, if it's not active already, I've noticed that they don't tell us when perks are or are not active anymore. You just kind of, they just kind of start working all of a sudden. So... You can carry 30% more, you get less wages, get less wages for workshop. Um, I swear there was one for it. Maybe it's not here, maybe it's in leadership, but um, I saw it earlier, and I swear I'm not crazy. But my point remains that um, it'll make that perk way more attractive, right? Uh, because now you're going to want to increase your... Oh, here we go. Also, caravans have more elite troops. Your caravan returns 5,000 gold when destroyed. So um, this will be a huge want for your uh, trading companion like my spice vendor character um which has not gotten any trading skill for some weird reason um will be able to snag this and it'll help out in the future so those are the two big things i wanted to talk about in addition to the layers i mean i do have a, a thief up here but uh if it gets attacked i'm just going to move over here so you can see the screen around here is what, where it will say hey your kingdom is under attack or your your thief is under attack or your castle is besieged and you're going to get two warnings one when it is physically actually besieged and then secondy one second secondary when it is assaulted so you get two sets of warnings that used to just kind of be um over on the side there oh the three troops have defected from my caravan. Well, this is just unnecessary. So right where that said that right there, where you would see your level notifications, your troops defection clearly, um, it would tell you, hey, something is besieged right now. You got to go do some work. And the same thing too with your parties. If you if you make any, then those parties, it'll tell you that this party is now under attack in that same exact section. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of clarity on some of these patch notes and you have a good idea of what's going on uh, in the beta branch, now main branch. And I will cover this, I, I want to do this every week. I want to just kind of cover, hey, here's a recap of all the patches that happened this week. Here's the big things that changed. Here's the, the little things that changed. And here's the things I'd like to see changed next week. Uh, let me know if that's the kind of content that you guys would appreciate going forward. Because sometimes uh, there's some portions of the patch notes that really aren't that, I know, I guess like uh, in depth, if you don't really are, are not looking specifically for that issue. So hopefully, again, this gives you some clarity on what those patch notes did for you. Um, if you don't know some of the other beta branch notes that uh, I've covered in a previous video, I will link that here at the end so you can go back and take a look at the beta branch video. I did the same thing for the beta branch so you can see uh, some of the changes there. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Let me know if this is the kind of content that you like as far as the patch notes go. I don't want to cover every little thing, but I do want to kind of do a, a batch cover of like maybe every five or six patches, something like that. And if you haven't purchased the game, you can purchase it from my uh, link in the description below. It'll send you over to Fanatical and that'll give you a Steam key that you redeem on Steam. Um, I get a 10% commission on it, so it's a pretty cool, minimally invasive way to support the channel if you don't already have the game. But why don't you? I clearly have over 100 hours, so should you. But as always, guys, have a good one and take care.